Yo, it's the exam coach checking in with you this morning. Today I am just about to pick up my jet bags post gym. I've done that now and I'm walking into work. So, been thinking a lot this morning. I use the mornings to think. Uh, often things pop into my head. And I was comparing this morning the value of online learning that you pay for. So, for example, online courses. Uh, It could be in subjects, it could be in a particular skill you want to acquire in life, versus free content, free stuff that is just put out there um, that you can watch on YouTube, digest on social media, whatever medium it's put out on. So I think the way I see this is free stuff on social media is the primary source of information you want to go to because it's free, you don't have to pay for it, right? No overhead, it just makes sense. And it's good content, it's going to help you to a certain extent. And it's important that you understand the extent to which content can help you and identify that and make sure that you're clear about it with yourself and where you currently stand in your learning uh, versus where you want to be. So, for example, I think a lot of the content that people uh, put out there could be at some, to some degree um, considered high level. So what I mean by that is it just offers some basic kind of tips or groundwork or uh, just a fundamental understanding of the subject and how to do it, if it's a how-to video for example. I think the issue here is, is that because there's no price attached to like no monetary value attached to this content. It means that the creator is not obliged to think through very, very carefully how the content is delivered, the wording of the content, how to actually you know, deliver the message uh, and teach in the best and most effective way possible. The way I like to think of it is, if you think of a teacher that, and, they have, uh, and their lesson plans, that's, that's a structured lesson. That's, you know, they've deliberately set out a strategy in order to get the information they need to get across in the best way possible. Uh, over an extended period of time, you could look at a term plan. So if you take a, a semester or a school term in a year and you look at that as the equivalent to an online course and the information that is released to you over a period of time, um, hopefully spurring a a transformation in yourself, either mentally or physically, whatever kind of course you're taking. Uh, It's been thought out really well. It's not sporadic content that's put out, um, people jumping in at different stages, rather everybody starting at one place and ending at another. And, And that kind of structure uh, and, and thorough thinking around content and, and the effect it's truly going to have on the, the customer is the most customer-centric way, I think, of making content and also something that it is worth paying for because it does take a lot of thought and effort rather than you know, the documentation format or the format that really is just a, a listicle or a you know, top five tips. It's there's not enough enough depth to it um, that if you do struggle with implementing stuff now look the, the the reverse to this is if you are very good at just getting a little bit of information and you have the initiative to execute uh, off the information that you're getting on the on the free content please you need to do that because that is that's the gold really that's what you're looking for um, that's the gold standard of learning and education if you can just be given a little nudge and then you can have the initiative to actually do it all yourself off the back of that because you understand the basic principles at play given by the high level free content, fantastic. I think what uh, online courses do and structured courses, what they allow you to do, um, especially if you're new to a subject, is create some real good structure around it and help you with that actual implementation. And this is one of the hardest things i found in life in general actually. It is uh, doing stuff rather than just thinking about it or talking about it. Um, Doing is, is so much more difficult.
because it's where the rubber hits the road. It's the action. It's, it's the tough stuff that nobody wants to do and it's why everybody doesn't do it, you know? It's why people say, oh, I wasn't able to achieve that, or I regret this, or you know, whatever it may be. It's because they failed to take action and action's, action's tough. You know? If you don't have a right plan, uh, and also, what you might be able to do is you might be able to take action for a couple of days or about two, three, four weeks, years, months down the line, okay? You're likely to fall off, falter, not have the right uh, kind of sustainable strategy in place to keep that behavior going. And how do I know this? Because I've done it. Uh, it happens to me all the time. Uh, and it's this constant battle to try and draw your habits and the way you want to be back to uh, the ideal rather than the default, which the default's easy. Uh, and it's why often people complain about you know, their circumstances. It's because the default uh, stage that you're in, the behaviors that you naturally revert to, often those that are easiest, the path of least resistance, it's easy to do. The stuff that everybody wants is tough and that's it that is the difference so i'm going to check out with you have a super day and enjoy <laughs>